The top stories tonight and why news. Lieutenant General Antonio Parlado Jr. says leftist groups are copying community preparatories to push their propaganda. The United States of America advises its citizens not to travel to the Philippines. Facebook users are warned of a circulating malicious link that triggers malware. President Rodrigo Duterte asks the Philippine Senate to give his executive order on lower pork import tariffs a chance. Former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin has been convicted over charges of murder and manslaughter in the death of George Floyd. The world's first hologram dining pizzeria in London brings families together. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Wednesday, April 21, 2021. I am Harleen Delgado. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the country and in other parts of the world. I'm Angelo Castro III. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UNTV News and Rescue social media accounts and our website, untvweb.com. I am William Theo. First in the news. National Task Force to End Local Communist Armed Conflict Spokesperson Lieutenant General Antonio Parlade Jr. confirmed that they are conducting background checks on some community pantries in the country. According to Parlade, leftist groups are copying the initiative to agitate the people's hatred to the government. Leia Ilagan has the story. <laughs> There is a hidden agenda in the distribution of free food and groceries by some community pantries in the country. Apart from food, they also distribute posters and pamphlets that encourage the people to revolt against the government. NTF LCAC spokesperson Lt. General Antonio Parladi said they are continuously checking on dubious individuals and organization. Chinecheck namin kasi sa kanilang website meron ng mga donations. They're asking for donations again. Eh, yun yung modus operandi ng yung CPP, mangingi ng mga donations abroad, especially dyan sa Europe, sa Australia, sa Switzerland. Parladi also says the groups who are complaining are clearly those who have links to the Reds. Parlade also said that organizers should not be afraid if they are not hiding anything. Leia Ilagan, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The United States of America advises their citizens not to travel to the Philippines. Rosalie Cos will tell us why. From level 3 or high COVID-19 level, the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention elevated their travel health notice against the Philippines to level 4 or very high. This means U.S. citizens are advised not to travel to the country due to severe COVID-19 situation. The travel health notice also says that even fully vaccinated travelers may be at risk for getting and spreading COVID-19 variants and should avoid all travel to the Philippines. If they cannot avoid to travel, Americans should get fully vaccinated before travel. All travelers should wear face masks, stay six feet from others, and avoid crowds and wash their hands. Recently, U.S. State Department revealed it would list about 80% of countries as level 4 or do not travel advisory due to the COVID-19 pandemic. 
As of April 20, 2021, more than 100 countries have been placed as Level 4 or Do Not Travel Advisory category by the U.S. State Department, including the Philippines and other neighboring countries such as Malaysia, Indonesia, Cambodia, and Myanmar. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. National Security Advisor Hermogenes Esperon agreed to President Rodrigo Duterte's recent pronouncements on the recent tension in the West Philippine Sea. According to Secretary Esperon, driving away foreigners with illegal structures in the area may mean waging war. Nel Maribohok explains why. National Security Adviser Hermogenes Esperon expressed his disagreement on the offer of the United States to help in removing the Chinese vessels that are parked in the Philippines' exclusive economic zone. According to Secretary Esperon, the government has its own strategy in securing our territory. We do not think that uh, they would be able to drive away anybody there. Uh, uh, this is something that uh, we would like to address by the deployment of our uh, patrol forces, our Coast Guard, our Bureau of Fisheries, as well as our uh, military assets. He is also agreed to President Rodrigo Duterte's pronouncement that only war or bloodshed can take back the West Philippine Sea from China. When the President says uh, we can only retake the West Philippine Sea with force, then that is very correct. If you want to retake uh, Mischief Reef, uh, Pirate Cross, and uh, Subi, then uh, you have to use force. And if you do that, then uh, it will be a shooting war. The security advisor explains that Beijing has started its constructions in Mischief Reef, Fiery Cross, and Subi Reef in 2013 to 2016, and it is still ongoing. So it's not easy for the government to just drag them away. According to Professor Romel Banlawi of the Philippine Association for Chinese Studies, other foreign troops like from the U.S. cannot just give assistance to the Philippine government on the maritime dispute as this will undermine the Philippines' sovereignty. The same argument why senators made the controversial decision to end the foreign military presence in the country in 1991. <laughs> Not renewed the military base agreement in 1991. Another expert says that strengthening alliances to other countries may resolve the problem. So, pwede natin silang hinga ng tulong, no? Uh, whether it is in the form of an alliance like the United States, o kaya eh, parang coordinated lang ng mga uh, policies, coordinated ng mga statements, katulad ng ginawa ng uh, Japan, ng EU, no? Nakakatulong lagi yan. Retired Supreme Court Senior Associate Justice Antonio Carpio already said that the United Nations' action on China's aggression in the region could deliver results without going to war. He said winning a UN resolution is already a huge victory for any country because it meant the support of the international community. Nel Maribuhok, UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. Experts warn Facebook users not to click a circulating post containing a link to an adult video. JP Nunez reports why. Facebook users reported being tagged by either contacts or strangers on a post with a malicious link to a supposed adult video. However, what appears to be an adult video, viewers are treated to a malware infection. Ang ginawa ko, accidentally naklik ko yung link na yun, o yung post na yun, after a while, parang ano siya, parang nag-send na siya sa iba't iba kong friends. Theo Salvador, a software development manager, says malicious links aims to capture information from private individuals which hackers might use for illegal transactions. Kapag naklik mo siya, pwede siya mag-install ng application sa uh, computer mo, sa gadget mo, Tapos yung application na yun, hindi mo alam, yun yung tinatawag na malware na nagsasearch siya sa mga uh, files mo or anything na pwede niya makuha related sa mga privacy. Normally, ang hinahanap nila is yung mga related sa uh, banking details mo, mga credit card details mo, kung meron ka nakansible, anything related sa payment. To solve the tagging problem, users need to tighten their privacy. Open your Facebook account and go to settings. 
After clicking the settings, go to the notification settings. Now head to the what notifications you receive, then click tags or push only. Lastly, go to get notifications when you're tagged by, then select friends. Meanwhile, the Facebook Asia Pacific has already turned down the malicious page while Department of Justice has already made sanctions to its administrators. JP Nunez, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Department of Health or DOH recorded 9,227 new COVID-19 cases, bringing the country's total number to 962,307. The tally, however, does not include data from eight laboratories that failed to submit their report on time. The case bulletin of the DOH also showed 19,699 new recoveries, which brought the total recoveries to 829,608. Total deaths also increased to 16,265 with 124 new deaths. Of the 116, 434,000 active cases, the DOH said 96.7% were mild cases, 1.4% were asymptomatic, 0.6% were critical, 0.8% were severe, and 0.52% were moderate. The Health Department said 26 duplicates were removed from the total case count and 14 of, those of these were recoveries. President Rodrigo Duterte has called on senators to give his executive order lowering tariff rates on pork imports a chance to address issues relating to local pork supply. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque said in a press statement that the issuance of Executive Order 128 aims to address the shortage in pork supply, stabilize the price of pork products, and minimize the inflation rate. President Duterte appeal, made the appeal after the Senate Senate Committee of the Whole adopted a resolution calling for the withdrawal of the EO. The administration commits to assess the order in two months if the intended effects have been met. Typhoon Bising has slightly weakened as it accelerates northward. State Weather Bureau Pagasa says as of 4 p.m., the center of typhoon was located at 345 kilometers east of Tugigarao City or Apari, Cagayan. It has maximum sustained winds of 165 kilometers per hour near the center and gustiness of up to 205 kilometers per hour. Tropical cyclone wind signal number one is placed over Batanes, eastern portion of Cagayan, including Babuyan Islands, and the eastern portion of Isabela. In the next 24 hours, the northeasterly wind flow enhanced by the typhoon will also bring strong breeze to near gale conditions with higher gusts over the coastal and mountainous areas of northern Luzon. Rains with gusty winds will be felt over Batanes, Cagayan, and Isabela, while cloudy skies with scattered rain showers and thunderstorms will prevail over Cordillera Administrative Region, the rest of Cagayan Valley, Ilocos Norte, Nueva Ecija, and Aurora. Bising is forecast to gradually weaken and may exit the Philippine area of responsibility on Sunday morning. Former police officer Derek Chauvin has been found guilty of murder and manslaughter charges in what the U.S. president calls a moment of significant change. Amiel Pascual will tell us why live. Amiel? Good evening, Kat. Joe Biden is celebrating some justice for George Floyd after Derek Chauvin was convicted of second-degree unintentional murder, third-degree murder, and second-degree manslaughter today. Together with Vice President Kamala Harris, Biden spoke to George Floyd's family after the guilty verdict with the family's lawyer Ben Crump, calling on the White House to push forward with police reform. President Biden stated they were relieved that Chauvin was found guilty not only for one, but for all three accounts, and comments on the verdict during his remarks on Chauvin's trial. Here is what the President further said during his remarks. One was, no one should be above the law. And today's verdict sends that message. But it's not enough. We can't stop here. 
In order to deliver real change and reform, we can and we must do more to reduce the likelihood that tragedies like this will ever happen and occur again. Meanwhile, U.S. Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez called Chauvin's conviction not enough, stating that it cannot be called fully accountability as there were other police officers involved in Floyd's death. Chauvin's could face a maximum of 40 years in jail for second-degree murder, while President Biden said Floyd's family was calling for peace and tranquility regardless of the verdict. Kath? Thank you, Amira Pascual, reporting live. Swedes under 65 vaccinated with one shot of the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine will be given a different vaccine for the second dose. The Swedish health agency considered AstraZeneca to be effective in preventing COVID-19 disease and reducing serious illness and death and will continue to use it to vaccinate people over the age of 65 years old. Sweden paused the use of the AstraZeneca vaccine in March after reports of rare but serious blood clots among people vaccinated with the AstraZeneca shot. The world's first hologram dining experience is uniting loved ones in London. Experts predict that within nine years, virtual communication apps will transition to holograms as a new way of socializing. Del De Castro reports why. Using pioneering technology powered by its gigabit network for broadband service, Virgin Media, a UK broadband service provider, brought friends and relatives from London, England, and Edinburgh, Scotland together for a one-of-a-kind pizza date. The Two Hearts Pizzeria was essentially split in two, with half of it located on London's South Bank and the other half on Edinburgh's Castle Street. 30 people participated in the two-day event, enjoying pies with friends via hologram on opposite sides of the UK. Virgin Media's holographic technology projected life-size holograms in the dining space, allowing the participants to see, hear, and talk to each other in real time, as if sitting at the same table. Our purpose is all about building connections that really matter um, and as we've been going through the pandemic we've obviously realised how important technology is in our lives and how important our services are and this is really the next step in online and kind of virtual gatherings. It was found that 2,000 Britons weren't in favour of communicating behind the screens and believed that it didn't provide a natural connection. Instead, the 3 out of 10 polled even preferred to have a hologram image of loved ones. At least 23% of the UK population, including James Bellini, tech forecaster and futurologist, presume that this form of technology will be made available within households across the country by 2030. This advancement in technology led to possible conclusions such as starting jobs without having to meet colleagues or even avoid missing out on concerts and other live events such as gigs and festivals. Dale De Castro, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. And those are the reasons behind the news in other parts of the globe. I am Kat Dumaraos, live from Bangkok, Thailand. Good evening. And those are the reasons behind the news, April 21, 2021. I am Harleen Delgado. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold, I'm Angelo Castro III. And because we need to know, we will always ask why. I am William Theo. We serve the people. We give glory to God.